The Lynette Brown Show. This this be the Lynette Brown Show. She's always ready in no time. The Lynette Brown Show. When you got something that's on your mind. The Lynette Brown Show. Whatever you got going on, she knows the deal. The Lynette Brown Show. Where we always keep it LBS, the hottest, the biggest, the baddest talk show of the South. I am the fiery diva. Keep the airwaves hot on your favorite station. Thank you guys for tuning in with me once again. Got a nice show lined up for you. We've got some Law 411 coming up here in just a little bit. And we've got a commentary. Later on in the show, we're going to be talking about Jason Collins. And if, for those of you that have not heard, and I'm sure you have, uh, this is the NBA player that came out and said that he was gay. So I've got some opinions uh, regarding that and just wanted to share that with you want to do a little commentary on that but we'll be back right after this don't go you know that guy in college the one that sat up front the one that asked all those questions the one that curved the grade well now it's your turn the adult degree program at Athens State University uses your experience knowledge and training as credit towards your degree you might be closer to your degree than you think it's time to finish what you started Visit athens.edu slash Visit Chuck Wagon Barbecue in Madison. The food is, it's absolutely amazing. The brisket here, hands down the best I've had in Alabama. The pulled pork here, absolutely amazing. Chuck Wagon has great food. Had a lot of their catering. Yeah, we come here for the ribs. Lunchtime, it's awesome. Chuck Wagon's the place to be. The food's amazing. I've been coming here for roughly two years. Never found any place like it there. See what you've been missing. Visit Chuck Wagon Barbecue, Madison Boulevard, just west of Sullivan Street. The best beef, pork, and chicken. Welcome to Eddie Pruitt Ford right here in Hartsville, Alabama, where we've got a great sale going on that you don't want to miss. Every new car and truck, every used car and truck drastically reduced including this state-of-the-art new 13 model Fusion, totally redesigned, cheapest price you can find anywhere in Alabama, $21,975, and that's loaded, not stripped, sport wheels, all-power equipment. If you want a great buy, new, used, program cars, whatever you need, Eddie Pruitt Ford right here welcome, in Welcome, welcome back to the LBS, the hottest, the biggest, the baddest talk show of the South. I am the Fiery Diva, keep their waves hot on your favorite station. Thank you guys for tuning in with me once again. We've got Mickey Gentle, and he is here to share a little law 411 with us. Mickey, thank you so much for coming up and being a part of the Lynette Brown Show. Thank you, Lynette, for having me on the show. It's my pleasure. Okay, uh, Mickey, I've got a question for you, sir. My father is 77 years old and has acquired 13 acres of land that was passed on uh, to him from another family member. My father has not been diagnosed with any mental problems, but he's very forgetful. He signed over the land to a known family member and he doesn't remember. What can we do legally to get our land back? First off, the presumption in Alabama is that if you own your land and it's free and clear of anything that might cloud the title or any lien or mortgage or anything of that sort, uh, it is presumed to be a valid transaction if you sign it over to somebody, whether that be through a sale, uh, a, a gift, a gratuitous transfer, and that holds true whether you are, are signing that over to an individual, a business, a charity organization, or whatever the case may be. So that, that starts with that presumption. To have a, a transaction like that set aside and overcome that presumption, one mechanism is to prove that the person who made the transaction was not lucid at the time of the uh, transaction. Uh, what I would suggest is that you probably need to go and have your father examined by a doctor who can detect whether or not there is something like Alzheimer's, dementia, dementia or some other deleterious disease of the, of the mind and see if it is there. And if it is, perhaps that doctor can determine how long that disease has been there. 
depending on how long it has been there, if it was there when the transaction took place, it is a possibility that you could have the transaction set aside uh, because uh, he was not lucid at the time. And um, it, I won't lie, it probably is a very long shot because of the presumption that, that is there in favor of the validity of the transaction. But if he does not remember doing it, that does call question in my mind uh, as a lawyer who deals with with uh, lucid and non-lucid clients, it does call into question whether there is lucidity or not. Um, but the one thing that does concern me about it is that there was there may have been a lawyer who drew up the deed, and that lawyer has to be reasonably satisfied that your dad was lucid, mm -hmm. otherwise he would not be allowed to, exactly. to do the deed. Exactly. For those who have just tuned in, you're tuning into the Lynette Brown Show. Thank you guys for tuning in with us. We're going to have to go into a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little drug talk. We'll be back right after this time. I eat a lot of barbecue, and Thomas Pitt is certainly one of the, one of the best in town. This is basically good old southern barbecue. I'm a Yankee, and you can't get this up north. We've been using the same recipe for 42 years. We got the best ribs in North Alabama. I've been here about 32 years. Oh, I like the ribs, cheeseburgers, pork. I like about everything still. I've been here that long and I still like it. I've been coming here since 1950 when Mr. Thomas had it and then James and Mary had it and now these people and the barbecue is the same. I've been in 19 countries and all the states and I've never found any other barbecue like it. It's wonderful. Hi, my name is Sarah. I've been here for like 38 years. I really enjoy it. I enjoy working with the old owners and I really enjoy Carlos, which is the new owner. And I just want to invite everybody to come out because the whole staff is still here. We still have the same people that's making potato salad, slaw, the cooks out back. We're the same. We're still Thomas Barbecue. Thank you. You know that guy in college? The one that sat up front. The one that asked all those questions? The one that curved the grade? Well, now it's your turn. The adult degree program at Athens State University uses your experience, knowledge, and training as credit towards your degree. You might be closer to your degree than you think. It's time to finish what you started. Visit athens.edu slash hey, My name is Edgar Taylor. I work here at Missouri Jane Cantina and Creamery at Somerville, Alabama. Do you love great food? And, uh, at a reasonable price, then come here. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. The hottest, the biggest, the baddest talk show of the South. I am the Fire Diva. Keep their waves hot on your favorite station. For those who have just tuned in, you're tuning in to The Law 411, and here to help us out is Mickey Gentle. Mickey, once again, thank you for coming up and being a part of the LBS. Mickey, I want to talk about something that is just so, just seems to be an epidemic. Drugs. Okay, now one of the questions was drug related, and I mean it was just simple and to the point, but what is the max for drug charges in Alabama? And that depends really on a number of things. Uh, it depends on what the drug is and what level of crime it is. Mm -hmm. um, some drug offenses are misdemeanors, uh, some are felonies, and in Alabama we have various classes of misdemeanors and felonies. Mm -hmm. uh, the misdemeanors are divided up into class A, B, and C, and the felonies are divided up into classes A, B, and C. And each class has a different range of punishment. Okay. Now, most if not all of the drug offenses that are misdemeanors are in fact class A misdemeanors. Okay. And for those, uh, the maximum jail time is one year. Okay. Um, there are some that are class C felonies and the range of punishment there is one year and one day to ten years. Okay. Uh, class B felonies are uh, two years to twenty years and for a class A felony it's ten years to ninety-nine years or you could get a life sentence. Now if you have a previous felony conviction then those uh, sentences that I just named are enhanced. For example if uh, you have one prior felony conviction and you are charged with a C felony, now then instead of a year and a day to 10 years, you're looking at two to 20 years. 
Okay. With a B felony, you'd be looking at 10 to 99 or life. Okay. With an A felony, you'd be looking at 15 to 99 or life. And it goes up all the way up to three or more. But, you know, uh, and, and, I, and I'm glad, you know, this person uh, takes that question in to me because I know of a situation. This young man was 17 years old. 20 years, Nikki. 20? Really? I mean, t it's possible. Um, not knowing about the case other than what you've just said, right? Uh, what I can do is speculate, but it sounds to me like this person probably had a prior felony conviction, um, probably uh, was convicted of a Class B felony, mm -hmm. um, because I don't think that a judge would put somebody in prison for 20 years uh, for a Class B felony first offense. Okay. I mean, certainly I'm not saying the judge wouldn't be in his discretion or her discretion to do that. Right. Because it's very clear in the law that on a Class B felony, a person is looking at getting two years to 20 years imprisonment. Okay. Uh, but they just simply don't usually do that. Okay. But now, uh, Mickey, doesn't it depend on the amount that you have? For drugs like marijuana, it does. Okay. Um, the marijuana law says that uh, it's unlawful possession of marijuana is the crime, for one thing. Okay. Uh, number two, the, the level of crime that it is will depend on a few different factors as well. The unlawful possession of marijuana in the second degree is a Class A misdemeanor. Okay. Uh, that means it's for personal use. And you've never been convicted of possession of marijuana that's before. Like, that's like a joint or something like that. That that's personal use. It is yes. Okay. Uh, it, it's not limited to just one joint. I mean, it, it's it can be a little bit more. Okay. Uh, but uh, the, whether the marijuana possession is for personal use or not is governed by the amount of marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're looking at it from that standpoint, now per, uh, possession of marijuana for personal use could be a felony if the person has a prior conviction of possession of marijuana second degree. Okay. The statute says that they have to be charged with a felony. Okay. And they don't always get charged. I've actually had some clients that by all rights according to the law should have been charged with a felony and got charged with a misdemeanor okay. by some oversight of those in charge of charging the crime. Okay. But if you have like 25 bags then you are a dealer. You probably are. You, you probably don't have a drug problem. You probably have a money problem. Right. Well, let, and let's, I'm glad you said about the drug problem. I mean, it seems as though that there are people in jail, you know, that have drug problems, you know, but they're, you know, why not put them in a rehab facility? And I like, you and I have this conversation before, and, and you gave me some information. Yes. For first offenders in certain drug offenses, they do have rehabilitation programs available where one can go through some sort of a drug diversion program and, and what that exactly is depends on the court that you're in front of and, and who the court referral officer is. Okay. Typically one has to go in front of the court referral officer uh, whether they go through the drug diversion program or not. Mm -hmm. They have to go through the court referral officer and then that person will make a determination that the defendant needs this, that, or the other treatment. Okay. And then as part of the probation or if they go through the diversion program as part of the diversion uh, as a condition for that, okay. they have to complete and pay for whatever program the mm -hmm. court okay. referral officer recommends. Now in the case of, of drug diversion, if they complete that program successfully, then they will have those charges dropped on sometimes okay. on payment of court costs, sometimes not. But but the bottom line is those charges could be dropped. But the problem the problem is that so many times a person does not complete the program. They leave, uh, kind of like you see on the intervention program, when the person will go into the intervention, and then at the end it says that they stayed two, three, four yeah. weeks, and then voluntarily <laughs> left. Well, that same so thing happens sometimes, uh, and sometimes. During the uh, process, uh, that person will fail a drug test, and that's another condition oh, okay. right there. As a condition to stay in the program, you have to uh, pass, pass a drug test. test, and if you don't, they'll kick you out of the program. You also have to stay out of trouble, and if you don't, they'll kick you out of the program. Okay. So 
opportunities are there for, for some drug offenses uh, to help the defendant if they've never been in trouble before and, and they really want to get the help. There are opportunities there. Okay. Well, Vicki, I've got this question. Uh, let's just talk about the degree of drugs. We're looking at crack cocaine and marijuana. I mean, are you more likely to go to jail? Is, is one offense worse than the other? The uh, crack possession, Both are illegal. possession of crack is a, is, uh, is a felony, and marijuana may be a felony or a misdemeanor. Um, whether or not the person will go to jail is going to depend, uh, again, on whether they have any uh, anything that would uh, make the judge mad enough to put them in jail. Okay. Uh, oftentimes, uh, they would rather put the person on probation. Okay. Uh, but now, if if a defendant is out there who has uh, a multitude of, of convictions with drugs, then, then ultimately that person is going to wind up in prison. Um, I've heard of some that have three or four convictions, and that that fourth or fifth one, the judge pretty much feels that his or her hands are tied yeah. and puts that person in prison. You know, I've, I've heard of cases where life, life in prison for drugs. If really? the, if it's the person people that murder people that don't stay in jail that long. If the, if the defendant is in pos, uh, possession of a drug and the crime there is a class B felony okay. and they have three or more prior felony convictions, then yes, they could receive a life sentence. Life sentence. Now, mind you, that life sentence still carries some possibility of parole. Okay. Um, so I'm not saying it's life without parole, but okay. it is a life sentence. That is something. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who have just tuned in, you're tuning in to the LBS. This is the Law 411, and we have Mickey Jell. And Mickey, we thank you so much for coming up thank and you. helping us with this. I have just learned so much, which I always do. If you guys have any questions for Mickey, Mickey's number is on the screen. Or if you have a question that you have for Mickey, please text me because I love getting your questions so I can put that out. Because believe it or not, when you ask the question, you wouldn't believe all the other people that would like to know that same question, okay? But we're going to go into a break, and we'll be back right for this. Station is made that the quality of legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers. The Barbecue Smokehouse. I just love the owner and the people who work here, and they have the best everything. They got the best barbecue sandwich. I really love it. I love their pinto beans. Their chicken and dumplings are just out of this world. And every time I'm by here, I gotta stop and get some. I love being here because they have the best peach pies. The Barbecue Smokehouse. Great pork and chicken. Point Mallard Parkway in Priceville. Hey, I'm Granville. We smoke all our meat with hickory and red oak, season all our meat with a dry rub, and our customers will tell you that we have the best ribs and the best barbecue in North Alabama. I come to Granville's for the great barbecue. They have great lunch specials. And well, I, I like the barbecue chicken. It's the best chicken I think I've had barbecue. Uh, barbecue sandwich, probably the best in town. Uh, the ribs, first time I came, the ribs were to die for. Granville's Gourmet Ribs and Barbecue on the corner of Meridian Street and Oakwood. and Thomas Pitt is certainly one of the one of the best in town. This is basically good old southern barbecue. I'm a Yankee and you can't get this up north. We've been using the same recipe for 42 years. We got the best ribs in North Alabama. I've been here about 32 years. Oh, I like the ribs, cheeseburgers, pork. I like about everything still. I've been here that long and I still like it. <clears throat> I've been coming here since 1950 when Mr. Thomas had it and then James and Mary had it. And now these people, and the barbecue is the same. I've been in 19 countries, 
and all the states, and I've never found any other barbecue like it. It's wonderful. Hi, my name is Sarah. I've been here for like 38 years. I really enjoy it. I enjoy working with the old owners, and I really enjoy Carlos, which is the new owner. And I just want to invite everybody to come out because the whole staff is still here. We still have the same people that's making potato salad, slaw, the cooks out back. We're the same. We're still Thomas Barbecue. Thank you. Hey, folks, welcome to Eddie Pruitt Ford right here in Hartsville, Alabama, where we've got a great sale going on that you don't want to miss. Every new car and truck, every used car and truck drastically reduced including this state-of-the-art new 13 model Fusion, totally redesigned, cheapest price you can find anywhere in Alabama, $21,975, and that's loaded, not stripped, sport wheels, all-power equipment. If you want a great buy, new, used, program course, whatever your need, Eddie Pruitt Ford right here in Hartford. You know that guy in college? The one that sat up front? The one that asked all those questions? The one that curved the grade? Well, now it's your turn. The adult degree program at Athens State University uses your experience, knowledge, and training as credit towards your degree. You might be closer to your degree than you think. It's time to finish what you started. Visit athens.edu slash My name is Claudio Bradford, chef and manager here at Grand Hills Barbecue. You are now watching the Annette Brown Show. Annette Brown Show. Yes, the hottest, the biggest, the bad talk show of the South. Woo! I am the fiery diva. Keep their waves hot in your favorite station. Thank you guys for tuning in with me once again. Time winding down just a little bit, but not quite yet. I want to thank Mickey Jones for coming up and sharing that long 411 with us. I hope you guys found that informative. And if you have any questions for Mickey, you can just call me. My number is on the screen, and I will forward all the information that you need to Mickey. And I want to say hello and thank you to all the ladies that sent their pictures to my email address. Okay, it's going to be a nice slideshow. And if you guys would like to be a part of the slideshow, it's called I Am Not My Hair. Whether you've lost your hair to chemotherapy or you just you know wearing your natural hair feel free to send me a picture the diva at bellsouth.net and i will include you into the slideshow title i am not my hair but i wanted to go ahead and go into this commentary of course we know about uh jason collins he is the nba player that came out and said that he was gay and uh there were so many opinions regarding it i had people to say well you know he should have kept that private that's not anything that he should have told anyone and had somebody else to say well i'm glad he came out you know that will open the doors for other people to come out and uh you had people like oh goodness you know uh what a poor role model you know that's a role, poor role model for our children to see an nba player to come out and say that he's gay you know that's that's a negative thing so i had a lot of opinions and then you know some people were like hey i'm glad he came out and maybe this open door for other people but uh let me just give you uh my uh personal opinion ladies and gentlemen what he did was very brave okay that was very brave what uh, Jason did because uh, I know cases where there are so many men out here okay they call them on the down low they are on the down low okay they are sleeping with men they are gay and pretending not to be these are guys that are married all day long they have children they are preachers they are deacons i mean they're the guy that you work right next door to they're, they're your next door neighbors okay they're gay and pretending not to be gay okay and the fact that that man came out and admitted that he was gay was really a door opener and maybe that will encourage other guys to come out because that is where we're getting so much HIV from and there are people that are walking around in your community okay right in your neighborhood that are HIV positive you'll never know do you think they're gonna tell you okay because they may have involved themselves themselves in a homosexual relationship or she may have involved herself with a guy 
that was involved in a homosexual relationship. So, I mean, we're acting like this is not real and like this is just, oh my goodness, this was just the worst thing that could have happened. But, I mean, he's getting some positive responses also. But that's the way I looked at it. I, you know, I've always had respect for a man. If he's gay and he's openly gay, I respect that man. But these guys around here that are acting like they're not gay, I mean, and it's all because, you know, we live in such a homophobic society, okay? That is why they're on the down low. And this is, you know, in the African American, and I'm not saying that it's not in any other uh, race or, or so forth. I'm just speaking from my own and the experiences that I've seen. Because uh, even when this guy came out, I've had guys to say, oh, well, he's a straight punk, you know? So that's why you have so many guys that are afraid to come out. So I think that that was very brave for Jason to come out because I wish more guys would if you are gay then you need to come out of the closet you know I know that there are guys like I said that are married okay they have girlfriends okay they are gay you know they are and it doesn't matter it you know is not just in jail people think oh you know he's been in jail he's been in jail I wouldn't mess with him if he's in jail let me tell you something let me tell you something, and this is real talk now, ladies and gentlemen. I interviewed, I interviewed this guy that was incarcerated. He was incarcerated, okay? And uh, let me tell you what he said. I said, you know what? I said, the biggest stigma that you guys have is that you guys go, you go to jail, and then you come out and you're gay. And he said, let me clear something up for you, ma'am. He said, the guys that are coming to jail, they're coming that way. He said, they're coming that way. And he said, and people say that, okay, well, there's a lot of rape going on in jail. You know, they're taking it in jail. He said, they're not taking anything in jail. They're giving it up willingly. It's too many of them that are giving it up willingly. And I was like, I was dumbfounded. I was like, really? Are you serious? But this is real. This is real. And uh, once again, you know, for those who have just tuned in, you're tuning into the Lynette Brown Show, it's time for me to close this out. But this is just a little commentary. I was just addressing the Jason Collins um, and the fact that he came out and said that he was gay. And I personally, I thought that that was a very powerful move because I've seen so many guys just around in the community that are married that um, are pretending not to be gay. And they are gay. They are gay, okay? They are sleeping with men, and they don't think anybody knows about it, okay? And, and I mean, it's not, a, it's not a, you know, and that's the first thing my son said. He said, Mama, he doesn't look gay. Okay, baby, there is not a look to it. You know, they think because, you know, if he's dressed in drag or whatever, you know, that he looks gay, so he's gay. But that's not the one you better watch out for. That's not the one you better watch out for, okay? I just thought I'd put that commentary in for you, but I got to go, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate your time. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do uh, Diva I Want It because I am saving it because Mother's Day is coming up, and I've got some great things that I'm going to give away, and I just thought that this way presents over anything else because this was something serious and I thought that this was something we needed to address. I thank you so much for tuning in to the LBS, the hottest, the biggest, the baddest talk show in the South.